Good day, ladies and gentle cults. Penny here with another headcanon to keep you up at night this nightmare night. It's October. It's Halloween enough. Let's look at a character known for being the princess of video games and the night. I hear this a lot in the fandom when discussing favorite princesses. Of course, I have my own personal favorites as well. And... Oh my gosh, it's Luna! I love her! She's so dark and deep and cute and I want to hug her and squeeze her and play video games with her! Luna is the princess! Luna! Right. What was I saying again? So among fans, it seems Luna still has way more popularity than even her older sister and sometimes over our main character, Princess, who actually does things. But with popularity comes a lot of disagreements. Is Luna just an overrated character? Well, let's take a look at how we first introduce her. For some reason, she's evil. <laughs> she started out as our antagonist for the first two-parter premiere of the show. Rainbow to good, joined back with her sister in society, and then peaced out until coming back after 27 episodes. Where she dyed her hair iridescent, grew two feet taller, and cursed with resting bitch face. Yeah, that's not a good way of introducing us to your sister, Celestia. So for the entirety of season one, we had no word from Luna, and with her being Celestia's little sister, you would think there would be some sign of her either at the palace or with her. So it left the fandom questioning what she's like or what type of personality she has, leading to things like Gamer Luna and Wuna, a cute chibi or younger version of Luna we have. Kinda can't be helped with her childlike voice and design where she wasn't as tall as Celestia and even used the term big sister instead of just sister like she uses the rest of the show. It- I want her plushie! It's Widow Wuna! She's so innocent and sweet and nice and not a troll like Celestia or a boring pink Barbie girl and has a great singing voice! <clears throat> Moving on. Luna Eclipse was basically our new introduction to the Princess of the Night and our first Nightmare Night episode, where we see she's not really good with people, even though she's been around for a few months and somehow is just now getting around to her subjects. Again, I don't want to turn down the idea of Luna being overrated, but when you don't have that much to go on and given a shaky introduction, it's not hard to feel bad for her. In Luna Eclipse, she was trying to be both royalty and a friend, something little Trollestia was good at. But instead, we get her as awkward but edgy teenager trying to be sociable. Then again, I might have mixed feelings if there was a holiday circled around me turning evil and being banished for a thousand years on the moon. They don't even really change anything the next Nightmare Night episode where there's still depictions of Luna's past transgressions. Was there any other depictions of characters being this passive aggressive to a villain turned good? Last thing she needs is another CHS event almost ruined by some power crazed lunatic. Uh, no offense. <sighs> None taken. It's not like we haven't tangled with dark magic before and totally whooped it sorry but... Uh, no offense. <sighs> None taken. Again. Just like when we were able to use it on Sunset Shimmer when she turned into that horrifyingly awful winged monster! No offense. None taken. <laughs> I'm used to it. Ah, right. Just disrespect every favorite character I like. That's nice. In the end, Luna's somehow fine with Nightmare Night and even has fun with everybody in Ponyville. And let's get to the episode people really had a problem with where they put the concept of Inception in a children's cartoon. A lot of fans had issues with how Luna dealt with this and I'll admit it raised a few flags. In the eyes of the fans and what she literally said in the episode, Luna created the Tantibus as a way to punish herself for being Nightmare Moon. Honestly, sweetie, you're far from the most dangerous villain this show has seen. If anything, she had a better punishment than a toddler. So not only are there nods to self-harm in a children's cartoon, Luna feels she doesn't deserve a good night's sleep if she's been doing this every night. Guess she was fine putting her self-harm on pause to at least help her subjects from nightmares of fear of the future, 
or guilt from hurting their sister, or being scared of horror movies? I don't deny it being a dumb idea to create something this dangerous that could possibly get out and harm others, but I can't fully blame her for this. Compared to a lot of other reformed villains, they don't really hold on to their past mistakes. Starlight Glimmer made it almost a conversation piece when becoming friends with Trixie. Discord is still his chaotic self, but not trying to dominate or hurt anyone. And the changelings... Uh... Ate a Snickers because they weren't themselves when they're feeding on love? At most Sunset Shimmer still hung on to her past mistakes and tries not to revert back to them, but at least acknowledged it and moved on from it. It still had a hold of her in Rainbow Rocks along with others not forgetting, but eventually it vanished and she learned a better way to... The magic. Yeah, that. Other villains like Stygian, Tempest, and the rest from Equestria Girl specials and movies just get a blast of magic, a stern talking to, and fall into the background along with Diamond Tiara. As for other villains... Well... This was still a kid show, right? In Luna's case, I think she gives herself too hard a time for trying to punish herself, but I think I can see the reason why. Picture this. Before the episode, at this point, Luna has a great life. She's helping her subjects in dreams, she's respected by the main six and the other citizens, and her relationship with her sister is probably the best it's ever been, and they're closer than ever. However... If she has this much good happening, wouldn't anybody want even more good things to happen? I think the reason she used the Tantibus on herself is to make her not feel any desire. It was jealousy and desire that made her turn into Nightmare Moon in the first place, and she knows if she were to feel that way again, it would mean the end of the peaceful and content life she has. Did you really expect me to sit idly by while they all basked in your precious life? People suffering from this type of depression don't always look sad. They can smile just like the rest of the people around them, but that doesn't mean it goes away. As for the episode, I've thought of a way of making this a bit more interesting. But to do that, we're gonna have to use cross media. In the MLP comics volume 5 through 8, there was an arc called the Nightmare Arc where beings from a place called the Nightmare Dreamscape, whose darkness corrupted Luna into becoming Nightmare Moon. This time, they corrupt Rarity, and she becomes Nightmarity, or Nightmare Rarity. Probably one of the best-looking villains I've ever seen. So, if there was a dark, misty entity that could make ponies have bad dreams, wouldn't that be the Tantibus in a nutshell? It would make more sense if Luna was instead guarding it from being released and using herself to occupy its needs to cause bad dream, but then didn't realize it was getting stronger with every bad dream it was feeding on and was released to Ponyville. It may take away from the original moral, but I think it could create a new moral of relying on your friends when you need help instead of trying to solve everything when it gets too tough. It makes sense to not have Luna want to be a burden or cause trouble for anybody else, and it makes Luna a lot more open character to express herself, which is basically the same moral they used in the comics, but done in a better way. The definition of overrated is having a higher opinion of someone or something that is not deserved, but I don't see what makes her not deserving of at least some praise. Before becoming Nightmare Moon, she's helped Celestia defeat Sombra and Discord, and even afterwards has been a help to her subjects in their dreams, including the Cutie Mark Crusaders and warning Starlight Glimmer of the Changeling's return before being taken. And after that, it's been Celestia and Luna being not just princesses, but being sisters. I think they gave Luna a shoddy opening, where we didn't see her for the whole first season after Reformation. I guess she was working the night shift for both Grand Galloping Galas and couldn't make it, 
but it's the hype from the fans for this unknown character that made them generate all of this fan art, ideas, and concepts we wanted to see. She's a princess and one that still gets looked down upon. It wasn't until season 8 after the movie and the last leg of the show that she finally gets a fucking throne after the original throne room was destroyed. And like I said, when you don't show a character enough to get an idea of their personality, you leave the rest of the fans hanging to create their own. We didn't need to do that with Celestia because we always saw her, she was always around, and she kind of comes off as too perfect. With Luna, I think the fans like the idea that she's not perfect. She's flawed and awkward at the start, but then warmed up and wanted to reach out to the people more. We got Cadence as more of a princess for younger girls, most who are probably fans of Disney princesses, and she didn't really do much except for being a great football for catching falling dragons and magic artifacts. And she mostly interacts with the main six, since one of them is literally her sister now. Celestia interacts with the townsfolk, but as we've seen, it's mostly as a princess and not a pony you can easily talk to. Twilight is guilty of hyping Celestia up, but since it's her teacher and mentor, I can chalk that up to idol worship. I don't think Luna is overrated myself, but I can see how it might be if you're just looking at the show instead of what caused the spike in popularity. Trust me, one moment on screen and the fans can expand it to a character worthy of praise. Luna is not overrated! She is great and awesome and smart and pretty and I really love her mane! Mommy, the cookie fairy lied to me. It's oatmeal, it wasn't chocolate chip. I'm Penny Wrights, and I have a little fangirl to tuck away for bed. Have a happy Nightmare Night and Halloween, everypony!